In this video, we're going to show you why we like to use and why we recommend the Canary L4 E6S Star Quad XLR cable. That name is quite a handful, but we're going to walk through all the features and specs of this XLR cable and explain why we recommend it. There are two different versions of this cable. There's the L4 E6S, which is manufactured by Canary in Japan, and there's the L4 E6S Plus, which is manufactured by Canary in China. If you buy this cable from an authorized reseller like B&H Photo, Sweetwater, or your local music store, you should be getting the L4 E6S version that's manufactured in Japan. Sometimes, if you buy this cable online from Amazon or any other type of online marketplace, sometimes you will get the plus variant of this cable that's manufactured in China. If you look at the cable, it will say on it, you can see that this one is the L4 E6S version manufactured by Canary in Japan. Obviously, the other version of the cable should have a plus sign there and say made in China. It is thought that the Japanese version is a higher quality and manufactured to a higher standard. So keep that in mind. If you're buying from Amazon, you might end up with the plus variant. Uh, just something to look out for. I haven't ever had my hands on the plus variant of it, but it is thought to be lower quality than this version. Of course, you're probably wanting the price as well. We do have some links down in the description below where you can find the current price. There is a ton of variation, obviously with length and color and all that type of thing, whether or not you're bulk buying. So do check out those links if you are looking for this, but I would describe the price as being mid high. It's definitely not the most expensive cable out on the market. I think that this really hits a really high threshold for high value, high shielding, good quality audio, but it's not at that totally prohibitive price point where it makes the cable unaffordable. One of my favorite things about this cable is that you can get it in different colors. It's a pet peeve of mine when I can only get black cable. When I'm in a studio like this, I'm always doing tutorials and that type of thing. Colored cables are really important to me because it makes it really easy for people to see what I'm connecting to what pieces of equipment. Makes my tutorials really easy for people to follow. I do, as a general rule, always recommend any cable that's shorter than 10 feet be colored. If you're patching outboard equipment like compressors or preamps or anything like that, it makes it really easy to troubleshoot. It can be much harder when you're only dealing with black cable. So it's nice to find a nice high quality XLR cable like this one that you can easily find in a variety of colors from most online retailers. In terms of length, you can find this cable anywhere between three and 50 feet online. You can also buy it bulk by the roll if you are wanting to make your own cables. If you are wanting to make your own cables, we're gonna show you how these ones have been soldered just so you can see as a template for when you go to do this yourself. In terms of flexibility, I was really surprised when we first started testing these cables how flexible they are. I've always been under the impression that a star quad cable is supposed to be really stiff. I don't find that at all with these cables. When I'm running these cables up and over boom arms like this, I never think about it. I'm never having to make workarounds because of cable stiffness. If you made me choose which one was more stiff, this one or the previous cables we'd used, I would say this one is maybe just a little bit stiffer, but in practical terms, you don't really notice it, and I think it's a non-factor. In terms of outer shielding, let's quickly walk through the cable and all the features that are built into it. I have the blue cable here that's from Canary. I have a black cable here that's from Ugreen, a massive manufacturer of cable, and I have the other kind of purpley color here that's made by GLS, which is, again, very popular, especially in North America. So if we start with the canary cable here, you'll find that this cable has the PVC outer core and then inside that there's this 95% shielded tack braided cable. So what that means is that there is like a basket weave of shielded cable there. And the reason that it's silver is it's tin covered copper there. And where the 95% rating comes from is with that basket weave, when you bend the cable, there are tiny little holes that open up so they can't claim 100% coverage. If it was 100%, that weave would be so tight that you would not be able to bend the cable. Now let's take a look at the design of a couple other cables here. With this U-Green cable that we have here, this is also claimed to be a braided design, so a two-way copper braiding. It's pure copper here, it's not tin covered. 
but you can tell that there's way more holes in this cable. This cable is brand new. I did the same process to strip the PVC off of it. And you can see that there's quite a bit more holes in the shielding here. So this would not be as good or as good a coverage against noise and interference. The other cable we have here from GLS is a more traditional copper spiral. This is a single way copper spiral. Now, Mogami has a, a very similar one, a competitor to Canary on that high-end price market. It does have better coverage than this. This is another brand new cable. You can see here that there is already a hole in the uh, copper shielding. This is brand new. I just stripped it away. It just wasn't that 100% level that a lot of manufacturers claim. So if we're comparing Canary versus other cables, that weave is more likely to restore but the spiral, every time you bend that cable, it's going to degrade a little bit. So you might start at 100% copper coverage compared to 95%. But every time you bend that cable, it's going to degrade. You're going to slowly go from 100, 99, 98, all the way down to probably 60, 70%. You can see here, this is a brand new cable. All we did was pull that rubber part off and it's probably already rated at what, 80%, something like that. So it does degrade quite quickly just by using the cable. So now let's look at the other end of this cable. So we took all this tin off the end and we gathered it to one side. This is what you would solder to the ground of your connector. We'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Inside of this tin shielding, there is a paper wrap that gives 100% coverage. Inside that, there's all this cotton yarn that is wound between the rubber here on the actual uh, cores of the cable to help give it a little bit more protection and help keep the cable nice and round. It does add to that fullness and protects the rubber cable on the inside. And inside that, of course, we have the four different copper runs. Next, let's take a look at the XLR connections themselves. We have the top of the line Neutrik connectors here. They're black with gold. Now, gold is known to be the most corrosion resistant out of all the other materials. And on the outside here, I always love having black connectors. I think they look better in the studio and live. If I ever get the choice, I always choose black connectors for my XLR cable just from a looks perspective. But then on the inside, I prefer gold because they are more corrosion resistant and more likely to last longer. Let's take a look at the inside of these connections. If we can break these cables down. We unscrew the bottom here, take the top off, slide the bottom down. There's a plastic kind of protector here we got to pull off. And there we can see how these cables are actually made. So you can see I said before that that tin shielding gets gathered and soldered to the ground line of the XLR connector. And then we see that we have two whites there that are going to another pin and two blues that go to another pin. So there's no fancy wiring or anything. We're just getting redundant cable runs. We get two whites and two blues to each destination where a typical balanced XLR connector would just have a single copper core going to each wire. Let's open up the second one. The male connector here, take the top off, bottom down, take this plastic cover off. And here we can see the same thing. So we have the tin that goes to the ground line, two blues and two whites, giving us that redundant connection. Again, on a balanced, normal, less expensive balanced XLR connector, you just have one wire going to each destination there. Okay, so who is this cable for? Who do we recommend gets this cable? This is by far my favorite XLR cable full stop. This is the one that I am most comfortable recommending to all my friends and family. Not only is it less expensive than the Mogami Studio Gold that everybody else seems to recommend, but from a raw performance point of view, I think it's on par. And from a longevity point of view, I think it's actually better. The shielding on this will hold up a lot better over a longer period of time. All that aside, you can get it in a variety of colors very easily from a whole bunch of different online retailers. So if you are doing home studio stuff with a lot of patching, it makes it a lot easier to troubleshoot and keep all your organization nice and straight. So I think it's better in that regard as well. Not only the raw performance, but the customizability of these cables is awesome as well. Now, what about live sound and live events? 
This cable is probably 15 to 20% too expensive to recommend that every production company goes out and upgrades their current cables to these ones. Do I think these will last a long time and take an absolute beating in live events? I do, but I think value for money, you can probably go with a less expensive cable. If you have the budget, by all means, I think this is a really smart choice and you will get your money out of this cable. But is it worth upgrading your current inventory? I don't think so. I can't say with a straight face that you should go trade up. I don't think you'll see the performance in live events as much as you would in a studio environment. In that live environment, you really don't need the shielding as much. The star quad design just really isn't as important in those environments. And it does add just a little bit of stiffness to the cable that you don't necessarily need in those environments either. If you have any questions about anything we covered in this video, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. Again, if you are looking for current pricing and specs of this, we have some links down in the description below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.